Hey, hello everybody, how you doing? Chef Franco here coming to you from sunny Florida. I want to go over some uh, recipes and new content that's coming up on my blog this summer for you guys to enjoy. So let's go right into it. Number one is, uh, about a month ago I had to make some buns for a dinner party. And I figured I'll make the old school uh, 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 sweet buns. They're pretty easy, they're a no-brainer, they come out great every time. But I was thinking of a way to make them more foodie oriented. So I added a little turmeric, a little flaxseed, and these buns came out beautiful. The turmeric gave a nice golden tinge to the dough. The flaxseed this dissipated nicely throughout the, uh, the bun, and they were just a big hit. Really simple, really nice, and something that uh, everyone can relate to. So give it a try, take a look at the, uh, the recipe on my blog. Next one is Agnolini alla Siciliana. This is a dish that we found during our Tavola Tours adventure to Sicily right before the pandemic. We were lucky to get that tour in right before the pandemic. It was a beautiful trip. You can always go on Tavola Tours, www.tavolatours.com and see what new trips are coming up. But in this case, we went to the food markets of Palermo. Palermo has some of the best food markets in the world, if not the best food market in the world. And it is just, unbelievable it's a foodie haven you'll see things that you recognize you'll see things that you kind of recognize you'll see things that you have absolutely no idea what it is but this agnolini uh, dish uh, was everywhere and it looked so good and it looked so relatable and it was something that i really wanted to try basically it's a hoop shaped pasta the kind you'll see like spaghettios most americans will relate to that hoop shaped pasta and it's baked like a baked ziti so you'll see it with uh peas you'll see it with uh, uh chopped meat you'll see it with eggplant um, the, the, the southern cheese, caccia cavallo, will be in there usually, and some pecorino romano. It's a really, really easy dish to make. It's fantastic, it's impressive, it's delicious. Your family will love it, your friends will love it, and it's a fun dish to make, so give it a try. Next one, codfish Livornese. Livornese, Livornese style is garlic, olive oil, capers, olives, parsley, white wine, and just some good tomatoes. I used uh, San Marzano mini tomatoes, absolutely delicious, made a wonderful dish. This is a perfect uh, sauce for white flesh fish. I use codfish, you can use sea bass, you can use any white flesh fish you like. It also works really well with swordfish. So uh, give it a try for your catch of the day this summer and let me know what you think. Next one is a Greek pita bread. I got this recipe years ago from a baker uh, on a cruise line. I mean, on cruise ships, there's not really much to do other than work and talk about recipes, talk about where you're from, talk about what countries you want to go see next and what you're going to do when you go home. So you get a lot of uh, uh, recipes as you're out there at sea. And this was from a, a Greek baker. Um, it's an authentic Greek gyro recipe bread. It's not the kind that puffs up and you slice it in the middle and you stuff it. No, this is the kind that you'll see in a Greek gyro shop and a Greek diner for your lamb, your chicken, uh, your beef uh, gyros. So kick up your gyro game, make this, let me know what you think. Next one will be Languini ai frutta di mare. Languini frutta di mare, fruits of the sea. And in this particular dish, I used a Bahamian uh, lobster tail, different than your normal lobster tails that you see up north um, in, in the main lobsters with the two claws. These lobsters do not have uh, uh, the big claws. They have little mini claws that, that really don't do much except for just pulling food into their mouth. So there's no meat in the claws. Um, it's uh, indigenous to the uh, tropical areas. It's indigenous to the area of Florida. So I figured why not use a lobster indigenous to this area rather than using the one everybody knows that comes from Maine. It added a nice element to this dish. It's a delicious, delicious fruit de mare recipe. Check Check it out, you're gonna love it. It's pretty much one of everybody's favorite. Next one is a braised red wine beef gorgonzola pearl couscous. I know that's a mouthful, but it's really simple. It's basically a, a, a red wine beef stew over pearl couscous and finished with gorgonzola cheese. You wanna use a full body red like a Merlot, um, what else I have, a Rufino, a Chianti. I used um, a, a Francis Ford Coppola Cabernet Sauvignon really really nice and really brought the, uh, the the dish elevated it up it wasn't that expensive these are mid-priced wines there's no need for you to buy a really expensive wine but get a good wine get a mid-priced wine and you'll see how it all comes together the beef the wine the gorgonzola cheese i mean it just sings it's a wonderful dish and it's perfect for some of those chilly days you might get in the summer but it's also a great dish for the winter time of course moving on we have a uh, beef in voltini with Spanish mayon cheese. Now everybody knows what a beef in Voltini is. It's not that interesting. It's just delicious and simple to make. But um, I figured let's do a little twist. Let's not do the mozzarella and the parmigiano or the pecorino. Let's try and do something different. So I fill the, uh, the, uh, the in Voltini with uh, asparagus, rolled it, 
and topped it with a Spanish Mayon cheese. Mayon cheese comes from the island of Mallorca off the coast of Spain. This particular region of Mallorca is considered to be one of the biggest dairy producing regions and one of the best dairy producing regions in all of Europe. So, I mean, that's interesting right there. And that's a great conversational piece while you um, are serving this dish to your friends. The cheese is not hard to find. You can find it pretty much at any good grocery store or Whole Foods, etc. And um, it's just something that, that uh, changes the whole dynamic of it, but it's still related and people love it. So these are the recipes that are up there right now for you guys to enjoy. Please go check it out, www.frankolandia.com. And also there's another section um, on my blog right below the recipes where it's called What's New section. And on there you'll see a lot of travel posts. Um, I have something up there about the west coast of the United States if you're looking to take a, a vacation that way this summer. Um, something about Florida. Everybody wants to come to Florida. I'm in Florida right now. And even Hawaii. Hawaii is a beautiful uh, uh, state. Um, it's a place that is very exotic and, um, you know, kind of like a paradise on earth and it's part of the United States. So why not go out there if you have the, uh, the ability to do so? I have tips on wine tasting. I also have a wonderful post on the Harry Ludberg School of Seamanship that I just left. It's the, the Coast Guard facility to, to get recertified for all my uh, credentials for working back at sea. There's a great post about that. Any of you guys interested in working at sea, I suggest you go check that post out. Um, there's also a nice post where I shared recipes with the Italian Tribune. Um, the, the Italian Tribune is the oldest uh, continuing Italian-American newspaper in the United States, and they've been around since 1931. So you can go on to my uh, blog, you can find that in the What's New section, and you'll see all the delicious recipes that I shared, and even recipes uh, that are on the, uh, uh, the, the post from the Italian Tribune themselves. So that's pretty much it, guys. I'm wishing you guys a great summer. I wish you guys happy cooking. Let me know your comments. Let me know your thoughts. Please keep in tune and have a wonderful summer. Bye now.